Welcome to Murfreesboro Storytellers. We're pleased to have as our guest on the program for this particular day, Dr. Carol Van West, who is the director of the Center for Historic Preservation at MTSU and the state historian. Dr. West, welcome. Good morning, John, how are you? Real fine, Van. You've been busy as a state historian, I presume. It's been a busy year, you would think, with the uh, COVID pandemic that things would have been slowed, but I have told people for some time, I think this is the busiest um, past year I've had since the time when I was working on the Tennessee Encyclopedia of History, which was a very busy time. Yeah, wonderful. Well, appreciate all that you do at MTSU and, and across the state of Tennessee. Tell us about the backdrop that you have in, on the picture. The backdrop I'm using is uh, a sort of preview and you can go to the courthouse and see it today. We have been working with county officials and County Mayor Bill Ketron to convert some of the downstairs first story rooms into a permanent history exhibit about Rutherford County. And in the hallway, we have some of our interpretive uh, panels sort of laying out the major themes of the county's history as a teaser for what will be installed in those rooms later in the uh, summer. So that's, a, I think, a very important project. We do have one of the six courthouses in Tennessee that were built before the Civil War. So, you know, there's 95 counties, so it's a rare thing indeed. And I always considered the courthouse to be the jewel of the county and the symbol that sort of can link us together in ways that maybe other places can as this county has grown so much in the last 20 to 30 years, the courthouse square sort of remains as a constant that everyone can use as a touchstone to our past. And you know, that's one of the challenges of the exhibit is to make sure that it is inclusive and covers all of the different themes and all of the different people who have, you know, made Rutherford County what it is. That, as I recall, you are a native of Murfreesboro. Have I am a native of Murfreesboro, but, you know, on this project, John, I really didn't want to be the lead lead because I am too close to the topic and too close to the county. So really on the part of the Center for Historic Preservation, uh, Dr. Antoinette Van Zelm, who many people here know from her different projects and work with folks across the county over the last 20 years. And then Dr. Lydia Simpson, those are my two sort of lead people okay. on the project. And then we're working very closely with John Lodel, uh, the Rutherford County Archivist and his team over at the County Archives. They're helping us find photographs and maps. And of course, then there's so many people from across the community who have stepped up and said, you know, we've got some iconic artifacts or objects that help us in understand the county's history. And we would like to share these with others. So there's just a whole host of groups and individuals who have been kind to offer their objects. And of course, we won't be able to use all of them. Uh, we want to try to use ones that convey the, the county in different ways. So that's sort of the challenge now that Dr. Van Zelm and Dr. Simpson have, but you know, rest assured they come and check with me on a regular basis about what they're finding and how does this fit into the county's overall history? So, you know, it's been a, a really interesting project. And even though, John, I, I did grow up here, um, it's one of those things, okay, I'm learning things I didn't know. I'll bet. So when you think about visitors coming to the courthouse, they'll certainly learn things they didn't know before. I'm sure of that. As I recall, you have degrees from the College of William and Mary from MTSU and the University of Tennessee. That's right, I did my undergraduate work at, at MTSU and you know we've been getting some students involved with this project from the very beginning. 
I rarely do a project that I don't involve MTSU students. They're just super, they're super kids and they're good to work with. And I always like to teach them, particularly with this project, something about the community that they're spending four years in. Right, wonderful. Tell us about your activities as the director of the Historic Preservation Program at MTSU. Well, John, you know, the work of the Center for Historic Preservation is focused mostly on graduate education. Okay. Most of the students who come and have uh, scholarships with us are graduate students either working on their master's degree or their PhD degree in public history. So we really focus on projects throughout the South and even into the West. So let me just sort of highlight two very different things that speak to the students getting involved, getting professional training, but I think would be interesting to a lot of folks. I'm sure. One is the Benevolent Cemetery here in Murfreesboro. Now this was built by an African-American fraternal lodge in the late 1800s to be the burial place for the leading citizens of black Murfreesboro. Right. Now this is in the days of Jim Crow segregation, of course, and you had separate cemeteries for whites and blacks and benevolent was a separate one for blacks. So a group of students worked this past fall and doing research on many of the individuals who were buried there and when that National Register of Historic Places nomination is finished up and submitted to the state for its approval later in the year, I think it'll be, you know, rather shocking to a lot of people, just the different stories that are involved with that cemetery. And, you know, the students really enjoyed that assignment, and I think they got a lot out of it. Now, in a sort of totally different vein, the National Park Service has asked us to work with them and the Church of Latter-day Saints to document the buildings that exist on the Mormon Pioneer National Historic Trail. And we have been delayed in starting that actual field study because of COVID. But we're hoping as vaccinations get to be more plentiful and we can get out there later in the spring and start that work. And the first phase of that project will stretch from Nauvoo, Illinois, which is right on the border with Iowa, to North Platte, Nebraska, right in the center of Nebraska. And that's the first sort of phase of it. And then we'll get to do the second phase from North Platte, Nebraska, of course, to Salt Lake City. And, you know, that is a part of the country that, you know, we rarely work with. So again, I think it'll be a great learning opportunity for us, but also a good way to sort of extend that MTSU reputation into parts of the country that might not know us too well, except for, you know, maybe the sports teams. Sure, that's wonderful. Where is the Benevolent Cemetery physically located? Oh, the Benevolent Cemetery is over on South Church Street. And many folks see it every day when they cross South, the big uh, bridge on South Church Street going to the interstate from downtown. If you look over to the right, you will see this cemetery. Um, Allen Chapel AME Church has been doing a great job in keeping it you know, maintained. And now we want to work with them and family members who have descendants there on the National Register nomination. So it's, you know, it's, it's easy to see just by crossing over the bridge and looking to your right. Do you have records of those who are buried there? We've got pretty good records. There's been different people compiling information on just the names that were buried there. And it's over 1,100. Oh, sure so not. it's a big cemetery. And what we have done is take those names and then sort of uh, dig deep on who they are by using you know, ancestry.com and newspapers.com 
and these primary source databases that you know you introduce students to and that's one good thing about the COVID times they've been able to work on that project you know sitting in their apartment or sitting in their homes using those uh, databases. What's the approximate length of the Mormon Trail that you mentioned? Man, that's a good question. Seemed like the first phase is like 750 miles. And then, you know, the next one, it's North Platte is sort of the middle point. So it'll end up being uh, 1,500 miles. I see. But, you know, we got experience in this. We worked with the National Park Service and the Cherokee Nation to do uh, a similar survey on the Cherokee Trail of Tears, which of course starts here in North Carolina, Georgia, and Tennessee, and stretches all the way to Oklahoma. So, you know, we know that uh, it takes some time, but boy, you meet a lot of people and learn a lot of new things. I bet you do. And with the, with the use of the Zoom feature, you were able to cover a lot more territory, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, it'll be real interesting. I mean, we put all of the information into one of those geographic information system maps, the GIS maps, and then the National Park Service puts it up on their website for the National Historic Trail. And that means, you know, you can do armchair touring of these trails. And um, of course, if you go out on the land itself, you know, you can pull up your phone and look at it that way. Sure. So, you know, it's really fun to be in this type of collaboration with the National Park Service. Let's talk about your work as state historian. When were you oh, appointed to this position? Um, well, I was appointed to the position by Governor Haslam in 2013. Okay. So now this is my eighth year and, you know, there's, uh, I'm constantly uh, trying to help, you know, local governments, nonprofits, parks and museums on all of their different history needs. And, you know, a lot of my work is really into documenting and research. So just last week, even though, you know, we don't have, uh, you know, vaccinations everywhere, groups understand that I will come meet with them, particularly when we're outside. And the group is small, so they can share what their project is with me. And I can see it up front and in person, and also hear from them what they want to accomplish. So being there in communities and hearing from people I'm still, uh, I'm old school that way. I really think that's important. So just last week, I spanned the state. I started in Monday uh, at Zion Cemetery, the oldest African-American cemetery in Memphis, meeting with a group out there. It was still, it was still sort of snowy, still sort of cold, but you know, it was, uh, wasn't that cold, everyone was dressed up and I could sort of understand what they wanted to do and how I could help them. And then at the end of the week, I was in Kingsport, just outside of Kingsport at a couple of historic family farms, uh, one of which that dates back to the Revolutionary War period. And again, those families had history questions and, and, history, and sort of historic preservation questions. And in both cases, you know, graduate students got up early. Don't tell me graduate students are lazy. In both cases, they had to meet me at six o'clock in the morning to do those trips. And um, of course, you know, what a great way for them to really see history up front, not through, you know, textbooks, not through Zoom, right. but being there in person. So. Um, I do, I try to merge my work as state historian with my responsibilities um, at the Center for Historic Preservation as much as possible, because it seems sort of silly for me to like go to uh, a house that's almost 250 years old near Kingsport and not take some students along with me who can learn from that. 
And again, what is always great in working with Tennessee communities and, you know, two really different communities last week, one an urban community, one a, an Appalachian community, but of course they were all the same about being about their history, wanting to know what the history is, warts and all, and then welcoming to both me and the students. So, you know, these, these types of projects go on fairly constantly. And I think it's a really important work that we carry out. Is that a typical week? <clears throat> well, what I tried to do is merge um, my work so where I can be out intensively one week and then I'm back on campus the next. The one thing that always everyone has to work around and they have gotten used to it over the years. Uh, I don't know, John, maybe for 15 years or so, I have taught my graduate classes in historic preservation and in history down at the Heritage Center, um, our headquarters building right downtown off the square. And they're on Wednesdays from like two o'clock to nine o'clock at night. So everyone knows on Wednesdays, well, he's here in town. He's probably down at the Heritage Center getting ready for classes. And that's just to help, you know, MTSU is so great to work with me on my schedule that way. So I can have that focus time with the students, but then in other parts of the week, have them out and about across the state. That's wonderful. Would you, uh classify any particular project as being more outstanding than the other as far Boy, as now you're trying to get me in trouble <laughs> because you know everyone thinks their projects are really important and they are to them and it's important to the community you know i would say right now probably the more important work i'm doing is sort of trying to put together a series of projects and a series of options for communities and property owners for the 250th anniversary of the American Revolution. Tennessee has created a Tennessee 250th Commission. Uh, they did uh, ask me to be the chair of that commission. So that I think is an important anniversary that's coming up. It's in 2026. But of course, the, of the Declaration of Independence. But you know, in Tennessee, you've got events associated with the Revolutionary War that began before that. So I know that uh, this trip up near Kingsport, already groups are talking to me about work in like Elizabethan, where Sycamore Shoals is, uh, Roan Mountain there at the border between North Carolina and Tennessee where the over mountain men would cross during the Revolutionary War. The Cherokees are talking to me about some of their important sites. So there's just a lot going on with that. And I guess I would say since that ties into the revolution and ties into the Declaration of Independence, that's probably the most important thing I'm doing right now. But I tell you, I like all of the little projects too, because it all gets to you know, how we have defined ourselves as a people and as citizens. From your duties as state historian, do you have a staff other than those that you work with at MTSU? Yeah, no, that's, you know, that's, now that's the other side of history in Tennessee. I, I love it where Tennesseans do really embrace their history and they are passionate often about it. But no, the state historian, I'm a sort of a lone uh, guy out there. And that's fine because again, Dr. Sidney McPhee, the president of MTSU, he wanted me to take on that role when Governor Haslam asked me about it. He was like, we'll support you how we can. I know you'll do a good job of blending what you do as a state historian with teaching our students of in, at MTSU. So I always keep that guideline of his in mind. So yeah, I, you know, we've got plenty of support through the university to make that happen. 
And I, I just think it's sort of also part of uh, MTSU's mission. Uh, in many ways, we are the public University of Tennessee that's touching all corners of the state. As far as history work, I know we're doing that. And it's just a good way to remind all Tennesseans that here at MTSU, we're a place that, they're, that they can come and learn and they can prosper. So yeah, you can see today I'm in one of my MTSU uh, sweatshirts and everyone across the state are sort of used to me being in my MTSU sweatshirt or MTSU jacket with my MTSU cap. I just like to remind everyone that it's, you know, MTSU is supporting these activities and that's important for them to know. How can we get more people interested in, in the historic uh, preservation program and well, not the programs as, as much as just our history and knowing more about how we got to where we are. Exactly. What else can you do to bring that forth so that people will, will know more about the history of our local community? Well, you know, now that's a good question. I think the courthouse exhibit is one of those things, but other folks at the Center for Historic Preservation, and this is led by Laura Holder, who heads up our efforts at the Heritage Center, they're putting together one of those sort of online walking tours of downtown that you access information through your phone. Now you can tell I don't know exactly what to call that. And I certainly don't know how it works, but the students do. And that is something they've been working with her on. Mm -hmm. um, we also have been, you know, working with several different groups on their records of their institution. I know one in particular is Bethel uh, Missionary Baptist Church, which is out near Walter Hill. They had some really old records. And my students will digitize those so the church can keep the records. But then that digital copy goes into the county archives where people can use them and learn from that. And then the other project, which you know I haven't been involved in, but Dr. Van Zelm from our team has been involved. And that's that leading ladies project where they've been putting together, you know, I know a drama, a play that will show a, at different places across the county once the uh, you know COVID restrictions are 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 gone, and uh, you know the other another thing people have been talking to us about, and we have been assisting are, are on the state historical markers. So you know here in Rutherford County, they're sort of in a lucky spot where you know MTSU is here. And you know, some students just don't have the capabilities in their class schedules and in their work schedules to like go off to Memphis. Right. And uh, they need projects more locally based. And that ends up being a good partnership with everyone. And of course, I would really be remiss if I didn't mention our long-term partnership with Main Street Murfreesboro down at the Heritage Center. That is a facility that we jointly manage. Now it's been sort of shut down in many ways over the past few months because of concerns from the pandemic. Sure. But I know now groups are back and meeting there and we always welcome all of the different heritage groups who come in there and meet on a monthly basis. And of course, Main Street's been doing a great job for many years. And um, it's good to have again, that partnership between the students and the Center for Historic Preservation and Main Street, because that's all about keeping the town's downtown economy strong. So, you know, this is a good part of the historic preservation work for students to get introduced to as well. Dan, you mentioned about historical markers. It's been so terrible across the country that a lot of the historical markers have been destroyed apparently trying to destroy our history, if you will. We haven't had any of that going on in Tennessee, have we? Well, you know, the state, I can speak to the state historical marker program. 
I know I'm on that committee for the Tennessee Historical Commission. Okay. And I think we do a nice job of um, taking a broad, inclusive, uh, historical view to all of those. I don't know of any state historical marker that's been removed. I know that there's been, um, uh, we were just approving two for Rutherford County, one for Key United Methodist Church and the other for Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, which are two of the oldest African-American congregations in the uh, city. So, you know, uh, there's always controversy in history, John, but, you know, what I always remind people is that history is the ultimate, it is what it is. What happened in the past did happen. Sure. And it's sort of our job as historians to root out and look for those sources that tell the most complete story we can find. And, you know, there's always been groups that don't want to do that. They just want, well, here's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> well, you know, that's okay. I go to where the evidence is. Sure. And, um, you know, and that's, that's one thing that we always enjoy, um, finding the evidence. Cause you know, it tends to be out there. It just takes the digging and, you know, someone's got it in a, I don't know, recently there was some great, uh, newspapers from the town's African-American newspaper that there had been like 13 copies found of this over the years. Mm -hmm. And someone bought a suitcase at an estate sale that had 50 copies uh, in it. So suddenly we got 50 new pieces of evidence, you know, to use. Right. So, you know, I'm always about follow the evidence. Yeah, I know people have stories, but follow the evidence. Right. Ben, is there any one project that you've always wanted to do but never been able to quite make it happen? Boy, now there is a good question that I don't think I have ever gotten. A project that I really wanted to do that I haven't done yet. Well, maybe, that's not maybe it's question. this one. Maybe it's this one. Uh, you know, one thing that I was really privileged to ask to get involved with over 20 years ago was the civil rights history of the South. Okay. And it was groups in Memphis who wanted me to come and work with them uh, on their civil rights history. And they, you know, just said, well, you know, sort of for a white guy, we think we can trust you because you listen and you seem to respect us. So what started in Memphis then went to Birmingham and I did a citywide study for the groups down there on their civil rights landmarks for the National Register of Historic Places. And then about 10 years later, I did Selma, Alabama and their civil rights landmarks. And just in the past few weeks, the sort of third place that I always thought, well, I should probably know more about that. But you know, it's their decision on who they want to work with. But it was groups in Montgomery, Alabama asked me to work with them on their civil rights landmarks. And um, I was glad to do so. Um, and uh, you know, I'm sort of old now to be doing some of this work and really into neighborhoods. I've learned so much. It's such a great opportunity and it's such a privilege sure. and I'll learn so much. So yeah, that's probably the one that I didn't think would happen. Right. And then suddenly in this year, it did. Ben, we thank you so much. We've run out of time. We appreciate your time and, and the work that you do locally as well as across the state of Tennessee. Okay. Ben West. <laughs>